waste much time i'll just go to the slides are not moving so this is the um, rt recommendation for post upfront mastectomy if you see like uh, we can categorize the patients into high risk category low risk category and intermediate risk category which is very clearly defined for all high risk category we can say like those with d3 t4 disease and having more than four axillary nodes and who has some gross extranodal extension in the uh, axillary nodes they all have high risk and definitely they need rt uh, there is no doubt in this part Okay, so the next part is about the low risk patients who had a mastectomy. That is T1, T2 disease, nodes negative, margins negative. They have a very low risk of local recurrence, and these patients don't need RT. In between comes the intermediate risk category where we need to personalize our uh, RT recommendations and go ahead. So does this indications hold good for patients who have had mastectomy after a neoadjuvant chemotherapy? So this is a question which we're going to answer now. So basically, we give neoadjuvant chemotherapy to take care of micrometastasis at the local disease site and at the distal sites, and it will also help us to serve as an in vivo dose response assessment to see whether the tumor responds to the chemotherapy or not. And other thing is, main thing is what we try to do is we see whether the tumor can be uh, downstaged and make it amenable for surgery if it is a T4 disease with skin involvement, or whether we can make it amenable for breast conservation surgery. And in few patients, we can think whether we can spare axillary lymph node dissection if they become completely node negative. So, but the practical benefit is what we find from neogen chemo. It permits us to tailor our therapy, and it also uh, gives us an option to limit our subsequent local therapy. So, but what happens with neogen chemotherapy? There are a lot of concerns. One is about the staging. Uh, because of uh, neogen chemotherapy, the primary pathological staging is lost. We might sometimes understage or overstage. To overcome this, maybe we should do biopsy from the axillary nodes up front itself. And the second thing is, second concern, what happens after neogen chemo? Can we offer breast conservation surgery after neogen chemotherapy? What is the significance of resection margins post neogen chemotherapy? Uh, does it have an effect on local control and survival? And the main problem is it obscures the indications for the regional nodal indication uh, for the regional nodal irradiation in post mastectomy RT. What neoadjuvant chemotherapy does is it changes the pathological stages in near about 80 to 90 percent of the patients. And initially, node positive patients, it converts them into node negative in almost around 30 to 40 patients, 30 to 40 percent of patients. So, the patterns of regression after neoadjuvant chemotherapy is either the tumor can completely disappear or you could have a concentric shrinking without um, any problems in the sidewards or you could have a shrinkage with multiple residual micro multinodular nodules multinodular lesions all these things will um, definitely uh, alter our pattern of rp <clears throat> so neogen chemotherapy now we have a wide range of uh, drugs being used one is with uh, uh, Pathological, or if you see bad CR, you get near about 10 to 15 percent of the patients with anthracyclines, and it increases to 30 percent with a combination of taxins and anthracyclines. And when you combine with transduzumab, we can even get a bad CR rate of near about 60 percent. It also helps in decreasing the axillary positivity rate, 30 percent with anthracyclines, and when you combine it with third receptor blockade agents, it can go up to 50 percent of the drug so 50 percent of the bad CR can be obtained. If you see the tumor type and the local regional recurrence after neogen chemotherapy, it's near about uh, varying from 5% to 14%. And uh, this table shows you a saying like uh, how to risk stratify the patients after neogen chemotherapy, low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk. So this is a paper published in 2012. Still, this paper holds good. Uh, low risk patients are those, those patients who are early stage T1, T2 disease, but they develop a path CR. I'll just come to the next part where we can see much clearly. Uh, if you see, this is a uh, this is a slide taken from Coles. Uh, he presented this in SABCS 2018. If you offer neoadjuvant chemotherapy to a patient clinically T1, T2, N0, and pathologically you find them as YP, T, N0, only to treat. But if you find these patients having more positive disease after the neogen chemotherapy, their risk of local regional recurrence is more than 10 to 15%. And these are the patients whom we need to treat. 
Other thing is, if ER is negative or patient is heard to positive, patient has got neurogen chemotherapy, definitely you treat them because their risk of local regional recurrence is more than 10 to 15 percent. Regarding the nodal irradiation, you consider that based on the pathological reports. I'll just come to that in the coming slide. So, in post LABC setting, that is clinically T3, N1, clinically T4, clinically N2 or N3 disease to start up front, to give them chemotherapy. And after that, whatever may be the pathological stage, whether it is YP, N0, YP, N1 or YP, N1 to N2, their risk of local regional recurrence is more than 10 to 15 percent. How they matter is the risk of recurrence is different for N0, N1 and N2, but everything is more than 10 to 15 percent. You should definitely consider neoadjuvant uh, post-op, uh, even after the uh, this thing LABC, whether they, whether they have a N0 status pathologically, you should definitely offer them RT. The intermediate thing is the T3, N0, clinically T1, T2, N1, actually this is a mistake. Uh, these patients, we, it's an intermediate area where we need to individualize our treatment. So my indications for regional nodal irradiation in this setting post neogen therapy would be for a supraclavicular nodal irradiation, all patients who receive RT, uh, all patients who receive RT after neogen chemotherapy will be getting supraclavicular lymph node irradiation. And if pre chemo imaging shows node in the supraclavicular region, then we should try to see whether we can boost this region also. Axilla, if there is a gross external extension present or axilla is not cleared, that is the time only when I will be giving RT to the axilla. In all other cases, I will avoid RT to the axilla. IMC, I will be treating only if pre chemo imaging shows IMC node in the scan and if it is a patient is having a T4 disease and N2 disease or N3 disease pre-chemo to start with. So these are the indications when I will be treating IMC. I will not be offering that to all the patients. So just to put in a nutshell, post neogen chemotherapy, if it is a breast conservation surgery, there is no doubt RT to breast regardless of the final pathology. Regarding the nodal irradiation, if it is a T1, T2, N0, no RT, to the nodes, if it is T1, T2, N1 or N0, you have to see uh, what is the degree, you have to have a combined disease decision based on what to do. If it is a node positive disease, then regional nodal irradiation is recommended based on the surgical factors.